Jaybone here, and I've got everything you need to know before you watch the 2023 Azerbaijan Grand Prix Jaybone. And as always, I'm joined today by producer Jeff, who is on the Formula Bone pit wall in Azerbaijan. Producer Jeff, radio check. Why are you uh, uh, here? Why are you here right now? Wait, I'm not supposed to be here? You're supposed to be in Azerbaijan on the Formula Bone pit wall. That's news to me. I sent you an email and a plane ticket. My phone was on Do Not Disturb. Okay, well, you need to get there immediately because the race is this weekend. I mean, that's going to make me very disturbed. Yeah, okay, well, go. You need to get there. Today? Yes. Uh, how? I don't know. Figure it out. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, yep. On it. The Azerbaijan Grand Prix takes place in Baku, Azerbaijan's capital city, which sits on the Caspian Sea. Baku is actually the largest city in the world that is below sea level, with the city's elevation coming in at negative 28 meters or negative 92 feet. This makes the Azerbaijan Grand Prix the lowest elevation Grand Prix on the Formula One calendar. For comparison, by far the highest elevation Grand Prix on the Formula One calendar is the Mexico City Grand Prix, which has an elevation of 2,232 meters or 7,323 feet, meaning Formula One races span around 2.25 kilometers or 1.4 miles of elevation. Baku's nickname is the City of Winds, which sounded familiar to me considering the American city of Chicago's nickname is the Windy City. I then looked up Windy City and came upon the discovery that there are 15 different cities that are referred to as Cities of Wind, which doesn't really make sense because we all know that the real windiest city is whichever one Yuki Tsunoda is in. Oh no! No, you didn't. Don't worry, my father is not smell. No, 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 Which, I guess this weekend, is Baku, so congrats to Baku on being the true city of winds. Hopefully for Yuki, it won't also be the city of holding your car together with duct tape again this year. Here are three Formula One Azerbaijan Grand Prix fun facts. Fact one, no driver has ever won the Azerbaijan Grand Prix multiple times. The first Azerbaijan Grand Prix took place in 2017 and in order, its winners have been Daniel Ricciardo, Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas, Checo Perez, and Max Verstappen. Some people call this the Baku curse, and if the curse is real, the driver most likely to take advantage of it and snag their first Baku win is Fernando Alonso. Number 33, anyone? Fact two. Formula One actually raced in Azerbaijan before the Azerbaijan Grand Prix ever existed. In 2016, the 23rd running of the Formula One European Grand Prix was held on the Baku City Circuit. This would be the final running of the European Grand Prix, which had been running on and off as either an honorary designation or standalone event since 1923, as Formula One decided to keep the Baku City Circuit on the F1 calendar permanently by adding in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix starting the following season in 2017. In fact, three. The Baku City Circuit contains the longest effective straight on the entire F1 calendar at 2.2 kilometers or 1.4 miles in length. It's not technically a straight because it contains some corners and kinks, but these corners are taken flat out, so it is effectively a straight. The next closest effective straight in length on the F1 calendar has not been raced on yet. It is the Las Vegas Grand Prix's Las Vegas Strip Straight, that will come in at 1.9 kilometers or 1.2 miles in length. Let's talk more about the Azerbaijan Grand Prix circuit. The Baku City Circuit may be the most interesting circuit on the entire Formula One calendar. Not only does it contain the longest flat out section on the entire Formula One calendar, it also is a narrow street circuit that forces drivers to meticulously race around UNESCO World Cultural Heritage List buildings built in the 1100s almost a thousand years ago with little margin for error because it's a street circuit. Baku's signature mix of flat out straights and very slow corners make it important to get your setup just right so that you can get the most out of the straights while still having the maneuverability and downforce to not slam into the wall at the incredibly narrow castle section, which is the narrowest part of any circuit on the entire F1 calendar at just 7.6 meters or just under 25 feet wide. Just ask Charles Leclerc. Sheesh. Not only that, 
but Baku's narrow streets surrounded by tall buildings result in these buildings casting shadows on the circuit, which can make track temperature change drastically from block to block depending on where these shadows are, which gives teams even more to consider when setting up their cars than usual. <sighs> <sighs> okay, Jay Bowen, I made it to Baku. Wait, how did you make it there that fast? That was incredible. Well... Anyways, I am here just in time to tell you to box for an ad read. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Something that I love about Indeed and the reason that I use it to hire is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because of their amazing matching features. Candidates you invite to apply through Indeed Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That is why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash FBone to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash FBone, Indeed.com slash F-B-O-N-E. Terms and conditions apply. Cost for application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Next up, here are your storylines to follow for the 2023 Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Your first storyline, whether you like it or not, F1 Sprint is back this weekend and it has a new look. The new Sprint Weekend format we'll be seeing for all 2023 Sprint Weekends starting this weekend in Baku is as follows. Friday contains the Sprint Weekend's only practice session and the Grand Prix qualifying session, which still determines the weekend's official pole sitter, but now also sets the grid for Sunday's Grand Prix as it should have been doing this whole time. Saturday contains a new qualifying session, the Sprint Shootout, which is replacing that pointless Park for May Free Practice 2 session and will determine the grid for the sprint race also on Saturday. The sprint shootout qualifying session contains Q1, Q2, and Q3 like normal, except they're all shorter than they are in normal qualifying, and also all cars must run medium tires for Q1 and Q2 and soft tires for Q3. The sprint race is now a standalone Saturday event that awards points to the top eight finishers, but has no impact on the Grand Prix grid, which it used to determine. Thankfully, it does not anymore. And Sunday is the Grand Prix itself. These changes are definitely an improvement upon the existing sprint weekend format. In my opinion, Grand Prix qualifying should have always determined the Grand Prix grid because history and because sprint races just would reset the grid after chaotic qualifyings, shouts to K-Mag in Brazil. Also, that Park Fermé FP2 was entirely pointless. How stupid was that? Now, is this the ideal F1 Sprint Weekend format? No, not until F1 Sprint Weekends incorporate a reverse grid, but hey, it's still an improvement. I should note that Baku is a pretty wild circuit at which to hold the first Sprint Weekend of the season, considering it is both extremely fast with the longest effective straight on the calendar and is a narrow street circuit, meaning there will be a lot of wear put on engines, and also, there is a high likelihood that there will be a crash on Saturday that, while it won't impact that driver's grid position under the new rules, would impact their car, which could, in turn, have an impact on their Grand Prix grid position if them taking on new parts because of the crash results in them taking a grid penalty. Imagine the chaos and outcry from teams if, on lap one, the driver in P1 locks up and hits the wall at the castle section, and that triggers a crash that takes out the entire rest of the field. Christian Horner had something very poignant to say about Baku hosting its and the season's first sprint race. Quote, The reality is, it's absolutely ludicrous to be doing the first sprint race of the year in a street race like Azerbaijan. But I think from a spectacle point of view, from a fan point of view, it's probably going to be one of the most exciting sprint races of the year. From a cost cap perspective, all you can do is trash your car, and it costs a lot of money around there. End quote. Your second storyline, is Max Verstappen about to make history at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix? 
Including the 2016 European Grand Prix, which was won by Nico Rosberg, the Baku City Circuit has hosted six Formula One Grand Prix without ever featuring a repeat winner, which is the longest current streak in Formula One. If Max Verstappen, who is the favorite to win this weekend, were to win the 2023 Azerbaijan Grand Prix, he'd be spitting in the face of the alleged Baku curse by not only becoming a repeat winner in Baku, but also by going back-to-back, having won last year's Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Are curses real? We're about to find out this weekend, folks. Your third storyline, did Ferrari have the greatest April Fool's joke of all time, or was that not a joke? As you all know, the 2023 Australian Grand Prix took place over April Fool's weekend earlier this month, and Ferrari won April Fool's 2023 by hilariously having both their drivers finish outside the points in Australia. My hat goes off to you, Ferrari. That was a great joke. However, I'm beginning to wonder if that actually was an April Fool's joke or not, given the fact that Ferrari appealed that Carlos Sainz penalty that I had assumed was intentional and all part of the joke, just like how I assumed Leclerc beaching it was also all part of the joke. I guess we'll find out soon, as this weekend's Azerbaijan Grand Prix will be Ferrari's second and last chance to finish in the points in April. It's time to find out if Ferrari actually pulled off the greatest April Fool's joke ever, or if they are just April's biggest fools. Last April Fool's, my wife left me. I'm still waiting for the gotcha. Your final storyline, does Checo Perez have what it takes to beat his Red Bull teammate Max Verstappen at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix? Yes, we all know Checo is good at street circuits. I know it better than anyone, as I'm the only person on planet Earth who correctly predicted Checo would win the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix earlier this year on my way to go in three for three with my Saudi Arabian Grand Prix predictions. By the way, stay tuned for my Azerbaijan Grand Prix predictions coming up shortly. And yes, Checo did win the Azerbaijan Grand Prix two seasons ago, which sounds like it would bode well for him. However, Max has crushed Checo in equal machinery at Baku the past two seasons. In the 2021 race that Checo won, Max had a four and a half second lead over Checo with just five laps remaining before his left rear tire suffered what Elon Musk would call rapid unscheduled disassembly that caused Max to crash out of the race at 200 miles per hour. And in last year's race, Max beat Checo by over 20 seconds. So if street circuit legend Checo wants to beat Max on this particular street circuit, he really needs to channel that street circuit magic inside him that we all know is there, but that he has not yet shown in Baku against Max. Box for ad read, J-Bone. Box for ad read. Let me quickly tell you about my sponsor, Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens is all of your key health products in one and features 75 high-quality ingredients that give you key daily nutrients and long-term gut health support. I gave AG1 a try because I hated having to remember taking different pills and vitamins and instead wanted a comprehensive solution to cover all my nutritional bases for the day at once. And I love AG1 because it isn't just that comprehensive solution, it also tastes great. I take it in the morning before doing anything else because I love feeling like I am covering my nutritional bases for the whole day within the first 15 minutes of waking up. And it literally could not be an easier habit to start. You just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing in the morning. Boom, you're done. And you don't have to drink it first thing in the morning. It's also a great pre and post workout drink. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash fbone. That's athleticgreens.com slash f-b-o-n-e. Check it out. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, here are my three bona fide race predictions for the 2023 Azerbaijan Grand Prix that I am about to go three for three on. My first race prediction is that American driver Logan Sargent will finish in the points for the first time in his Formula One career. Logan had a phenomenal weekend in Baku in Formula Two last season, finishing P6 in the sprint race and P2 in the feature race. Not only that, but one of the Williams car's biggest assets is that it is quite fast on the straights, and Baku has the longest effective straight on the entire Formula One calendar. And that is why I like Logan Sargent to finish in the points in Baku. My second race prediction is that Yuki Tsunoda will also finish in the points. 
If not for that bogus Carlos Sainz penalty last time around in Australia, Yuki Tsunoda would have logged his fourth 11th place finish in a row, which is not exactly inspiring. But Yuki had an awesome weekend in Baku last season that his P13 finish does not properly articulate. He qualified P8 and was actually running in P5 before his rear wing fell apart and then expertly had to be fixed with duct tape, which somehow didn't propel him to the podium. Not only that, but Yuki also finished P7 in Baku in 2021. Yuki clearly excels at this circuit, so I expect to see him in the points, despite the fact that if it weren't for that dumb penalty at the last race, he would have scored no points at all since October of last year. My third race prediction is that Fernando Alonso will finish on the podium again, but this time higher up than P3. The Aston Martin car excels at slow corners, which Baku has plenty of, and with the run of form Alonso is on right now, and presumably a good luck text from his rumored girlfriend, Taylor Swift, I like Fernando Alonso to finish in the top two for the first time since 2014. Next up, it's time for the return of an old classic. Here are my predictions for the top five finishers in the 2023 Azerbaijan Grand Prix with zero reasoning nor explanation. P5, Lance Stroll. P4, Lewis Hamilton. P3, Checo Perez. P2, Fernando Alonso. And P1, Max Verstappen. Finally today, a tangent. I recently spent many hours drawing a very beautiful and a very accurate portrait of Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc. Check it out. Now, after I posted my artwork, some people in the comments who clearly don't have an eye for talent or art decided to rudely come at me and say that my amazing work of art did not resemble Charles Leclerc. First off, it very clearly does. And second, they must not have seen Carlos Sainz's recent portrait of Charles Leclerc, which, in my opinion, is very clearly an example of what a bad portrait of Charles Leclerc actually looks like. So I want to now leave it up to the people. Who drew Charles Leclerc better, J-Bone or Carlos Sainz? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe now so that I can see you back here after the Azerbaijan Grand Prix for my Azerbaijan Grand Prix recap, where we will digest all the insanity that occurs at this race weekend together. Also, I am so close to 100,000 subscribers, so if you are not subscribed to me on YouTube, mash that button so I can get that silver play button, baby. j -bomb! Special shout out to my top Patreon supporters, Kolki, at Rated Bookie, and Glow! Until next time, folks, j -bomb! J-Bone!